I have a video posted of my all-in-one Chinese diesel heater showing the modifications I had to make to it and how I use it to heat my truck shell camper. In this video, I'll show you how I use the same heater to heat my workshop in the basement. I live in the Carolinas, and like a lot of people around here, I have an electric heat pump that cools and heats my home. The heat pump works pretty good, but in the winter time when the temperatures get really low, the heat pump starts working hard and the electric bill starts getting high. I like how well this heater works and how efficient it is. It takes such a small amount of fuel for such a high amount of heat output. I started thinking about ways I could use this diesel heater to supplement the heat in my house. I decided that one of the easiest ways to heat the house would be to start out using it in the basement. I have a full-size basement that is mostly underground, but the top three or four feet is out above the ground. I have 24 inch by 24 inch basement windows all around this house and it just so happens that this diesel heater will fit up in that window sill just about perfect. The part of the basement window that slides open and closed is easily removed on any of these windows so I just had to come up with a panel that would replace that part of the window. At first I thought about making a wooden frame and a metal plate in the center to run the exhaust pipe through and then I remembered I have some one inch thick material laying around the shop that I used on an old project that might work out a lot better. These one inch panels that I had laying around are used to insulate a high heat area like in an oven and it just so happens that the part of my window that slides back and forth is about one inch thick so it turns out it was pretty much a perfect match. The first thing I did was cut out a section of the panel the same size as the sliding window. After measuring, I cut out a hole for the hot exhaust pipe and the fresh air intake hose. I already have high heat cloth around the exhaust pipe just for some added safety, but I also added a second layer of the cloth right where the pipe exits through the panel. The high heat panel fits up in the window nice and snug, and it actually opens and closes just like the original window panel. Now all I have to do is set the unit up in the window seal while guiding the exhaust pipe through the first hole and then run the fresh air intake hose through the second hole. I bought this 3 inch adjustable metal elbow at the hardware store for just a few bucks. It fits over the end of the heater perfectly and I can adjust it to route the heat out towards the room. The unit requires 12 volts DC and around 10 amps of power while the glow plug is cycling. The glow plug only cycles a couple minutes on startup and a couple minutes when it's shutting down. The time in between is maybe a half an amp or so. It's not very much at all. I've tried two different methods to power this unit and they both work good. One would be something like this jump start battery that I already have. It's more than capable of supplying enough power to the unit and I can leave it plugged in charging the entire time that it's being used. Option number two is this AC to DC power supply. I bought this off of Amazon. It's about 15 amps or 200 watts of power. That's more than enough to run that unit. The only thing I'm worried about is if I'm using this while powering that unit and I have a power failure, then that could result in to some heat damage and a little meltdown on my hands. So what I've done is plug the AC to DC power supply into this battery backup. This is something like you would use for a backup on your computer. That way if I do have a little glitch in the power the unit will just keep on running like normal and it gives me time to properly shut down the unit and let it go through its cool down cycle. This larger 100 amp hour battery box is the one I use to power that heater when I'm truck shell camping. If I were going to run that heater all day long just cycling on and off and on and off here at the house, this would work a lot better than that smaller jump start battery as long as I had a battery charger just to keep it topped off 
or I can always just use the AC to DC converter with a battery backup. If you do end up going with this AC to DC power supply and want to keep the end on it like I do in case I want to use this for something else, make sure you get a heavy duty plug to match up to it. I had a, one version of this that was really cheap. It was like 18 gauge wire and it dropped the voltage down below 12 volts whenever that heater and glow plug would cycle. So I ordered this heavy duty plug off of Amazon. This is the only one I could find that was 14 gauge wire. Most of these are 16 gauge wire. This was even a little heavier at 14 gauge. And when I use this, the voltage never drops down below 12 volts. It made a huge difference. This one comes with the ring terminals already soldered on the end with the color coded heat shrink and it even came with some extra 15 amp fuses. The workshop in my basement is about 12 feet by 30 feet with a really low ceiling. It's well insulated but it's the only room downstairs that is not heated. I normally rely on like an electric space heater or a propane type heater but it's really not the ideal situation for a heat setup. If it's freezing outside, it's certainly not freezing down here in my workshop, but it is cool enough to be uncomfortable when you're down here messing around and working. This diesel heater is plenty enough heat to heat this workroom down here. I think the BTU I've heard on this wide open is probably around 27,000 BTUs. I don't have to run this thing wide open. I can just leave it on a low setting and just maintain the heat and keep it plenty comfortable to do what I need to do down here. I've had the heater running for a little while now down here in the shop it's not a super cold night out tonight. It's about, it's about 70 degrees room temperature now. So that means 70 degree air is being pulled in one side of this heater. It runs across the heat chamber, heats up the air, and it comes out the other side. I've got a little temperature probe stuck in there uh, the best I could. It's just too hot to hold it there. And I've got the heater set on the lowest setting. I think it's 1.5 hertz is the pump setting. The air coming out the other side is about 210 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's about a 140 degree temperature increase at the very lowest setting. I can turn it up higher and the little temperature probe maxes out. It only goes to 220 and it would be too hot down here if I did that anyway. So that just gives you an idea of how efficient these little heaters are and how well it heats this shop area down here. One more thing I will mention is this is not the greatest way to have this exhaust pipe mounted. It comes down out of the unit then back up again before it exits out the window. So I'm thinking there's potential for condensation to gather in this low spot. For me it's not going to be that big of a deal because I'm not going to mount this anywhere permanently. I'm going to be moving it frequently so it will give me a chance to check and make sure there's not any condensation down here. But it's something to keep in mind if you plan on mounting this somewhere in a permanent spot. Do I feel comfortable about leaving this heater run for an extended period of time unattended? Well, I'm not so sure about that. It's a safe setup, but the good thing is I don't have to really worry about that. If it cools down down here in my shop, it doesn't take very long to heat it back up. So if I'm down here working and know I'm going to be gone for a while, I'll just go ahead and power the unit down and when I get back, I'll fire it back up. That about wraps things up. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. This project has worked out good so far, but there's always room for improvement. If you like the video, maybe give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.